Looking around eBay a couple of weeks ago, I came across this from a Chinese seller, the EP Ever Ebox TCP02 serial device server, and it piqued my interest especially because I've not even seen this mentioned on the EP Solar website. And slightly unusually for EP Ever, it's just come in this anti-static bag with a cable and a manual, nothing more. Usually, EP Ever products are uh, shipped in a retail box, so that's a bit peculiar. Well, what is it? Well, clearly from uh, the explanation and uh, hopefully from this manual, you can see it connects to your uh, solar charge controller and then through a network, it can connect to your PC. So it's a standard 10 stroke 100 megabits per second uh, ethernet adapter here, network port. And on the other side, there's just four pins uh, for the uh, cable, which is the RS485 cable. And this will, uh, well, clip in there it only goes in one way presumably it's been wired correctly this connects to your solar charge controller and you connect this side to the network which should be well absolutely perfect the only slight irritation here is it does seem to need external power but there's two ways to get that in either this connector or the uh, barrel jack there but straight away the first thing that i notice is it's excellent that it takes anywhere between 8 and 70 volts, so that's great for those who are on 12 and 24 volt systems, and of course even 48 volt systems if you've got one of the uh, big solar charge controllers. Uh, but one thing straight away I do need to point out, look, um, the middle, the centre of that barrel connector, well that's negative, that's really unusual these days, nearly everything is positively centred, so uh, let's make sure we don't make a mistake there later. Now with these two screws removed from one end, I should, I think, be able to push out the circuit board from its case where it just slips in. And uh, yeah, straight away we can see it is uh, conformal coated. It does have protection on the PCB for any, uh, I don't know, damp or humid conditions. And then we've got, well, what looks like a pretty standard daughter board there, a network um, a adapter or module. And in fact, yes, it says TCP232 on the top. So is this a... Uh, a network to RS232 adapter, serial adapter, and then there'll be a serial to RS485 here, probably on this chip. And uh, yeah, then that connects through to the RS485 connector here. Capacitor on the input, inductor there. There's obviously a, a switching power supply going on. Well, there must be if you can take up to what? It was 70 volts, wasn't it, on the input? So uh, yeah, definitely a switching power supply. Probably that chip there with this uh, diode and inductor. Yeah, so uh, it's much as you would expect and uh, seems to be reasonably well made. Now this short manual on this piece of paper does explain that the uh, Ebox TCP02 is compatible with an awful lot of the EP Solar and EP Ever charge controllers and also mentioned up here the inverter range as well, although I think you might have to buy a different cable with a couple of these models to be honest. Uh, down here it says it consumes a little less than 1 watt, 0.92 watts and uh, the communication distance can be up to a hundred and forty meters which might be useful for some a uh, hundred meters maximum ethernet that is fairly standard but also 40 meters um, on the rs485 but obviously you'll need a longer cable now we've looked at the ebox wi-fi before and this is the wi-fi adapter for the charge controllers whereas this is obviously a wired adapter um, and this is well, unfortunately, not as good as it could have been. The fact that it's powered directly by the solar charge controller is excellent. It's nice and neat. It's obviously a bit more of a consumer product in plastic rather than the metal of the Ebox TCP. But unfortunately, this fell short because you have to connect your device directly to it. You can't connect this to your normal network and then connect from your normal network through to this unfortunately 
So I'm hoping that the eBox TCP has done away with that issue. The fact that obviously it has to connect to a network suggests that hopefully the software allows you to leave your laptop or your phone connected to your normal network and then you can still view the information from your charge controller or inverter. So let's give it a go and well fingers crossed. So first things first let's rewire this plug and please somebody remind me to wire it back the opposite way again when we're done. Okay and with that done let's uh, plug it in. Oh is it not? 5.5, 2.1, hmm, nothing's showing up, that's peculiar. Right, so I've removed the uh, barrel jack, let's plug in this connector, that's better, there's a power light on there straight away, so uh, let's get this side of the cable plugged in and uh, find a charge controller. So I've got my Tracer A MPPT solar charge controller here on the bench next to the uh, Ebox TCP02 and the cable, the RS485 cable is plugged into the top, looping round and the other end, well it's still in my hand and that goes into the COM port at the bottom of the Tracer A. No additional lights on the uh, Ebox TCP because, well, we've got no network, so uh, I've got a lovely uh, pink network cable here and it's that way up. And uh, yeah, so we've now got, well, no extra lights on there, but there are, well, there is some uh, lights here on the actual network point. One to say we've got a link and one with a little bit of data going across it. So uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully, this is picking up an IP address from my home router and I'll be able to uh, log into it. Let's have a look. Time has passed and I've struggled to get this working but eventually I have and this is how. Out of the box the uh, eBox TCP has a fixed IP address of 192.168.0 dot seven now i'm not a fan of uh, fixing ip addresses on devices especially when you're selling them because it may be that it clashes with another device on your network or they may be in a completely different range entirely from your normal network however you can set this up to use dhcp by logging into the web interface here and changing to local ip config and uh, moving that over to DHCP, clicking save and restarting the module. Now after this unit has rebooted it's got an IP address from my router and from the DHCP service it runs and we don't really need to change anything else in these menus. The only thing I will point out in the MISC config section is to get into this GUI you need a username and password and they're both set to admin by default so it's probably worth changing that before you get any further. The other thing you'll notice is that this isn't EP Ever or EP Solar branded and that's because that little daughter board we saw earlier in the eBox TCP, the Ethernet to RS232, is made by this company, USR IoT. And it's on the USR IoT website where I found the piece of software which finally managed to get the eBox TCP to work. And uh, I'll obviously put a link to this in the description below, but it's on their website, which I like to call usriot.com. Once you've downloaded and installed the uh, virtual serial port server software, if we click on this uh, down, drop down here, the first option seems to work best for me and it's automatically found the eBox TCP on my network with that same IP address, uh, which is handy. If not, you can click search and it should find it after a second or two. Now we click set device and make sure that the, uh, the uh, eBox is set to a TCP server click OK and then we connect a virtual COM port. Now I'm going to go for, I don't know, COM port 3 and uh, this software needs to act as a TCP client. So uh, click OK and hopefully that will pop up. There we have it. COM port 3 and it even says 
it's connected so let's open up the solar station monitor and uh, expand that so uh, we'll now go to port config and uh, com port 3 we can add that in close that down and then we should be able to add a charge controller here number one that's absolutely fine click add and uh, there we have it it says it doesn't exist oh no sorry com port 3 that's com port 7 start monitoring and hopefully after a few seconds there we go we're starting to read the charge controller parameters so my batteries are at 12.93 volts at the moment they've had a good day after playing with this for a couple of hours and doing some further research to be able to complete this guide, there are a couple of things I'd like to mention. Firstly, as this name suggests, actually there is an Ebox TCP01 also available, and that's not just an RS485 adapter, that also does RS232 for those charge controllers that use that protocol. But of course it is just an RS232 to network adapter so it could potentially be used with all sorts of other devices as well. The second important point is actually this 5.5 2.1 barrel jack here input um, is not um, as it mentions here center negative it is in fact center positive so when i uh, connected up earlier um we well we tested the reverse polarity protection which seems to work so uh, yeah that actually is center positive and uh, do ignore the uh, diagram on the outside of the case so the ebox tcp02 is a handy device for those people who want to monitor their solar charge controller but don't have wi-fi and or a computer close by which they can plug the usb cable into unfortunately the instructions are completely non-existent but hopefully this video will allow you to get up and running i'll leave some links to below to the items i've used in this video if they're of any interest to you Hopefully you have enjoyed this video, if you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.